Let's try another unpacking of an Emily Dickinson line. This is a first line of another poem. First two lines. Much madness is divinest sense to a discerning eye. So to me, this is a really good example of irony. And by irony, we mean a discrepancy between expectation and a reality or claim. Now, those of you who are really into logic out there might also point out this is a paradox, uh, an apparent contradiction of terms. And you could go that way if you want to and use paradox to un uh, unpack this line. But I want to just use this as a quick example to show irony because we don't expect madness to be sense, right? So there's this juxtaposition of madness and sense here, a discrepancy between our expectation of madness as being nonsense, as, as being irrationality, when, and then the claim here that it's not only rational, but it's divine rationality. Now, there's all sorts of ways you could unpack this idea. But the key thing is, if we're going to write about irony, we want to identify that discrepancy. We want to discuss that discrepancy between the expectation and a reality and a claim. So our notes here might be things like madness is usually uh, irrational. Um, uh, uh, odd juxtaposition with divine sense. So we're noting the kind of language problems that, the, uh, that makes the irony work here. Uh, and we're going to try to figure out, okay, then we need a guiding question. What can we create as a guiding question here? And I think what we're going to be saying is something like, you know, how does Dickinson use um, irony, uh, use the irony of much madness to um, advocate for human agency? Something like that, right? We're going to ask a question that gets us to the idea of human agency and what we want to do. And so this is kind of the thinking process we want to work with. We start off with a line from a text, we find a literary device in it, and we use the definition of that literary device to start unpacking the language. And ultimately, after spending a long time thinking about this and playing with this, we try to, com we try to compose a sentence that maybe pulls it together. Uh, before I do that, though, I can't resist talking about this wonderful I here. So you've got the I, E, Y, E, which is an eye of vision. And vision is always a symbol of illumination, of access to truth, but also is always a pun on I, capital I. So there's an interesting thing going on there, too, with ideas of truth and the person and the personal identity and madness and sense. So this poem is actually, if you go on to read the whole thing, a poem about uh, resisting conformity, resisting uh, a, a culture that expects you to conform to the, its sensibilities, when in fact, in order to transcend all that, you need to embrace a sort of a kind of cultural madness, uh, an almost spiritual, divine cultural madness. Uh, anyway, the point is, though, the method here is to start off by applying that definition, breaking things down, and asking a question. And then as you answer the question, you end up writing the sentence for your analysis, the kind of sentences you'll want to use in a paper. Let's see if I can whip one up here. By the way, before we go on to look at my sentences, this is just an awesome poem. Much madness is divine as sense. To a discerning eye, much sense, the starkest madness. Tis the majority in this as all prevail. Ascent, and you are sane. Demure, you're straightaway dangerous and handled with a chain. So in the context of the poem as a whole, this ironic reversal of madness and sense at the beginning is actually kind of a protest against the conformity of the majority, right? And uh, a resistance to assent and instead proposing that you demure, which is to gently resist. Uh, and, and then in response, you're, you're put in chains by a society. It's an awesome poem. So let's see what I came up with as an unpacking of that first metaphor. So 
Here I'm saying that she, I'm bringing an idea of human agency. I'm saying she rejects the expectation that madness is irrational and argues for a divinest individualism that rejects the rationality of social conformity. Here the connotations of madness and rationality are reversed because of the social patterns with which, um, uh, the social patterns not with which. See, this is what happens in draft. You have to change things. She associates with each uh, idea. Uh, uh, human agency requires a uh, fearless individualism in the face of social conformity. Something like that, right? So do you see how we can just take, you know, just a couple words and we have several sentences of analysis and interpretation. And that's what I'm trying to show you here. Again, you're not going to jump from just learning these terms and looking at literature like this for the first time to crafting masterfully composed analysis. Not that this is particularly masterful, but you're going to move in this direction. And that's what I want to see you do in our first exercise. Remember, in our exercise, you're going to look at your metaphor, look at your ironic situation, unpack its meaning by using the definition of the term and then craft a guiding question that you answer using those notes that you've generated. All right, see you in Canvas.